Hi, I'm Jenny Fish with One Big Happy Yarn Company and welcome back to our Love Bug Baby Set Knit Along. We're on episode two where we'll be making the soaker and changing pad. The supplies that we're using are available at OneBigHappy.com. We have the kit that has the yarn and the pattern. The yarn that's in the kit is for both the jumper and the soaker. But the yarn that we're using specifically for the soaker is a Cascade 220. This is 100% Peruvian wool. And it is ooh, so soft and squishy. But it really does make a good soaker for the baby when you use the 100% uh, wool. Later on, I'll show you, we've added some embellishments. We have a duplicate stitch little heart pattern here on this soaker. Here's the front, and so that's on the little hiney area. And then we have the changing pad. Basically, this is the leftover yarn after we're done with our soaker, so we just knit that all up and then use some of the extra leftovers from the jumper to put a little detail on there. So let's get started on the soaker. First of all, we're gonna be using two different size needles. We're casting on with a size five for the waistband for the ribbing area right here. And then when we get here, we switch to a larger size. If you're anything like me, I get going and I'm halfway down when I go, oh, I never changed my needles. Oops. So if you're anything like me, some pre-planning would be to place a sticky note or a big star or highlight where it says on the pattern to change needle size. That way you don't forget and, you know, be halfway down and go, oh, because I've done it. I hope I'm not alone in that matter. Okay, so we're gonna cast on. Now the cast on for the ribbing, when I'm doing something like this, I like to use a stretchy cast on or a looser cast on. You can double your needles up and do a long tail cast on, or you could do a stretchy cast on, and we have a video for that that I'll put a link up above. Either way, it, it's not particular, it's knitter's choice. But we're gonna go ahead and cast on. Um, now this pattern is the one size fits most for the little guys. Um, it goes along with the little jumper that we have. And so you cast on 80 stitches. I'm just gonna do um, my two needle long tail cast on for this one. And, get, and I'm gonna do a little sample here so you can knit along with me while we do this. I just just like that. So if you need a little bit more information on the long tail cast on, we do have a stitch support video and we'll put a link up above so you can click on that to get a little more detail information on this. Okay, so I'm just casting on a few here to give you an idea of what it looks like. When I do two, then you pull one out. And for yours, you, your stitches will go all the way around. That's why we have a 16 inch cord so we can continue knitting around. Since I'm doing a little sample, I'm gonna pop over here to magic loop for a second. Don't let that fool you though. You'll be knitting completely in the round. Okay, now we're doing two by two ribbing, super simple. You knit two, purl two. Don't forget to place your beginning of the round marker. Since you are knitting in the round on a small cord, you'll want that marker so you'll know when you get to the new round. And then you knit two and purl two, just like that. Okay, so you'll continue going around and around until you have the length for your waistband that you want. Once your waistband is finished and you have your two by two ribbing, now is the time we're changing to larger needles. What I do is just simply go through, pick up my new needles, and I knit straight from the other one all the way around with the new size. I don't transfer all of them over, I just knit the next round. So we'll go ahead and Knit one round. And again, yours is gonna be bigger because you're doing the full size version. So go ahead and follow your pattern, work in stockinette, until it shows you that we're gonna be doing some short rows. 
and I will show you how we work those short rows. Let me get one round on here and I'll give you some examples of that. So now I'm ready to start short rows. I want to show you what that looks like on the back side here. This is on the little bum area and you'll see a little extra fabric here and a little extra fabric on this side. It just helps give them a little bit more room in there. And um, short rows is just some added stitches, some added fabric in, um, in the garment. And it doesn't take away from the total stitch count all the way around. So I'll show you how we make those. And we make those using wrap and turns. So you'll follow your pattern, you'll knit across half of your stitches, and then it'll tell you when you need to start. And I'm just gonna show you the whole wrap and turn process. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and knit across a few stitches here so I get to the other side so I can show you what that looks like. So to make a wrap, you're going to bring your yarn to the front, slip the stitch from your left needle to your right needle, then bring your yarn to the back, and then slip that stitch back over. Turn your work. So you've been working in the round, now you're going to be working on the inside of your project just for these brief little short rows. Then you purl back, and it'll tell you how many stitches to purl back. And then to wrap on a purl side, you take your yarn to the back, slip that stitch, bring your yarn to the front, slip that stitch back, and then turn your work. So that's how you wrap a stitch. You wrap and turn on both the knit side and the purl side. Now I want to show you how to work those stitches. Because once you've worked those, we're just going to simply knit all the way around in one big round and incorporate those wraps. So you'll see um, knit the stitch and the wrap as the instructions. So I'm gonna knit up to that wrap. Here it is, and you can see it right down here. Here's the stitch and here's the wrap. You'll see this stitch going horizontal right underneath of that. That's the wrap. To knit those two, I just slide my needle into the wrap and into the stitch and knit those two together and I kinda have to bend it a little bit more to get through both, but that's how you work the, um, the wrap in with the stitch. Then let me get back around here to the purl side, the one that we wrapped on the purl side. It's basically the same thing. You just pick that wrap up, put it on the needle with your stitch, and knit it together. Okay, so I've knit all the way around. I'm back to where that wrap is on this side of my work, and I want to show you, well, let's show you what that looks like. It's going this way instead of that way, so it does look a little bit different on this side. That's the wrap. So let me knit to that so I can show you how I knit it together. And you can tell where it's at because there'll be a, a little bigger gap between those two stitches than what you see in your other work. So that's like, ah, oh, that's where that wrap is. Okay, so here is that wrap. It's going this way versus the other way. So it's picked up a little bit different. I like to use my uh, DPN and come back behind and just slip it. Oh, this needle's in the way, there we go. Slip it up onto that needle and then knit those two together. And that will close up that gap that's formed from the wrap. And then you just continue on to the you know, beginning of your round and then follow the rest of your pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and knit to the beginning of this round. The next step is dividing for the legs. So we have made this little area here you just knit a couple more rounds and then you're ready to start making these little leg areas right here. Okay, so now I wanna show you the technique for dividing for the legs. What we're gonna do is just cast off or bind off first few stitches after the beginning of the round. And to do that, you knit one, 
knit two, lift that first stitch up and over. Knit the next stitch, lift that stitch up and over. You're only working on half of the stitches at this point. We're doing this front area right here. So you're binding off here and binding off here and then we're gonna work this area in the center there. So go ahead and bind those off on this side, knit across and your pattern will tell you exactly how many stitches. And then work a little over here. And this is the how you work this is you're gonna bind off on the second for the second leg, just like this. And then we're gonna work on the second half of the stitches. So these will hang out here. So I've worked myself back to the front. Now on this side, you'll go back and forth, back and forth, and you'll be working a little decreases on the side, back and forth, until your stitch count matches up. We have finished the waistband. We have worked a little of the soaker. We've done the short rows on the bum area. Then we've come down, we've bound off for the legs. We've worked our little crotch flap here now we're ready to bring this up and graft these two together and then have our finished soaker. So this is the area that we're at right now. We have these stitches live on one side, these stitches live on the other side. You can use a Kitchener stitch if you're familiar with that and comfortable with that, perfectly fine. But my new go-to is the Finchley stitch and I wanna show that for you. You turn your work inside out so I have the wrong side facing me. Put my needles next to each other. And you wrap your yarn around your stitches three times. Just like that. And that's how much yarn you need to perform this graft. I always wonder, like, how do they figure these things out? But I read that somewhere and it has worked every time I've used it. And I always give myself a little extra just in case. I'd rather have a little bit more than a little bit less. Then go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. Now here's where the magic happens. And these steps are listed out in the pattern. You put your needle into front stitch knitwise, back stitch knitwise, and you drop that last stitch off the back needle. Pull it through. Just like with the Kitchener stitch or any grafting, you're basically replacing those stitches with your needle and you really need to try to maintain the same tension or the same gauge that you had when you were knitting. It takes a little bit of practice to get that tension right. So just be patient, go slow and have that tension. Be aware of that tension. Now we're coming back across and I'm going through the back purlwise through the front purl wise and I'm dropping the first stitch off the front needle and pulling through. Now just repeat those two. Go in through the front and the back knit wise and drop the stitch off the back needle. Then I'm coming back purl wise and dropping the first stitch off the front needle. Back and forth. So when I'm going from front to back, I drop the back. When I'm going from back to front, I drop the front. I'd rather leave my tension looser than tighter because it's easier to tighten up when you're done if you need to. So that's just a little trick as I'm getting more familiar with this grafting technique. I love this technique because it processes in my brain easier than the Kitchener stitch. To me, it's just two steps where, versus the Kitchener stitch. You've got four steps that are random and, it, and it, I feel like if I stop in the middle of the Kitchener stitch, I'm lost and I have to start over. 
This one, I know right now, oh, this just came out the back, so I'm going back the front and I'm going pearl-wise. It just makes more sense in my brain, this one. And it has the same desired result. Okay, I just finished my last two. You go ahead, turn it right side out. Let me show you what that looks like on the finished sample. Here's the pink one. Here's the blue one. So this is the graft right through here where we finish those off. Go ahead and weave in your ends. Block and lie flat to dry is how I got the best result. Remember, this is 100% Peruvian wool, so you will have to hand wash these. But you're using them as soakers. You're going to be used to the whole having to hand wash them. So that is our soaker. So now let me show you how we make that a little adorable heart. First is gonna be placement. Um, I come right through here. This is just how my brain works and how I figured it out. I know that there are 40 stitches from here to here and I know the center point is here because of my two by two ribbing. So I just followed that down until I found about where I wanted to start my little heart. You can put it anywhere you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and start right here. I'm gonna mark that, let's see. I'm gonna mark it with a double pointed needle since I just found it for you guys. Put that right there. Okay, now I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and for these sets, I use the leftover yarn from the jumper to put the little heart on there. Um, but you can use whatever color you want. If you really want the little heart to pop, if you have some yarn in your stash you want to use, go for it. These are just an added embellishment that we're putting on here. Okay, so I thread some yarn on my tapestry needle like this. I'm going to leave a long tail that I'll weave in later when I'm done. I kind of want to show you just the... Uh, process of a duplicate stitch. I'm going to come in underneath here and go right through the center. See how the stitch forms a V like this? I'm going through the bottom of that V and bringing my yarn through. And then I'm going to come up and wrap around the two legs of the stitch in front and then I'm gonna go back into the bottom stitch of that V. And so I have just basically stitched over the stitch that was in there, and that's called a duplicate stitch. Follow your chart, and it'll tell you where to put these stitches. I'm gonna move over here to this next one and show you that one more time. I'm going through the bottom of that stitch, and you can also, if you need to tighten up, that's that tail hasn't been woven in yet, so you can tighten it up to match your gauge. Okay, so I'm through the bottom. I'm going to go up through both legs of the stitch on top and then go back down where I came in from originally, just like that. And now I have that V that's over that stitch in front of me. And then I'll show you one more time, but then you get the gist of it. We're, it's kind of embroidery, it's duplicate stitch, it's putting the little extra pattern on there. Go through and back in. Just like that. So that's how we make the little heart on the bum area, just like this. Super cute. Okay, now with the leftover yarn that we have from making our little soaker, we can make our changing pad. Super, super easy, guys. You just cast on the number of stitches that I have in the pattern because I went through and made sure that you had enough yarn to do this. And then garter stitch, knit every stitch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then bind off and you have a little square. It's, it's really that easy. Now the extra embellishment on this is the little bind off all the way around the outside. If you know how to crochet, you could just crochet all the way around. But if you wanna stick to knitting, 
I'll show you how I did this. So I've got a sample here of the pink where I wanna show you how I picked up the knit along the outside of the changing pad. Here is the original changing pad. Now you can see I used the leftover color from the jumper, but in order for you to see, I'm gonna use that bright yellow again so you just have a better view of what it looks like. So a couple of things. You have your bind off edge and your cast off edge. So this is where I bound off. I have all these lovely little V's up here. And this is where I cast on. You turn it, when you go like this, then you can kind of see the V, but it looks just a little bit offset from a V. So that's the cast on. On the edges, this is where, from the garter stitch, where I switched from side to side. And I'm showing you these edges to give you an idea of it's not gonna look the same on every side. So we're gonna have to pick up these stitches a little differently. On the garter side or, or the edges of our garter stitch, it's super stretchy and we have like this back and forth. I like to pick up right between the bumps. So you see these bumps right here, there's a bump, there's a bump. I like to go right between those. And I do like to get two strands of yarn. It's just a security thing for me. I, I just think it's more structure that way. And then I just knit right into there. So again, I'm gonna go through here. I have two strands from the bar of the stitch and I knit into it. Go all the way around. I just pick up all the way around. Now I'm coming up on the corner. And I do like to try to pick up a couple extra stitches as I'm going around that corner to kind of give it some extra room to lay flat. So here, use your best judgment. Um, here is the slip knot where I cast on, because this is my cast on side. I started after the bind off and as I went around. So I like to pick up on this side Oops, right there. And again, on the other side of that to give me a couple extra stitches as I'm working my way around. Now, this is where I cast on. So I have those kind of off slanted V looking stitches. I'm gonna go through. And again, if you need to like pull out a double pointed needle to help you get that stitch, by all means, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go under, and again, I like to have the two legs when all possible. Oh, that's where my, let me go under this one. Cause that's where I just went through. So I'm gonna go through the next one and I'm kinda gonna, I don't wanna split my yarn. Here we go, I got those two. And so what I did was I pinched it with my thumb to hold that open so I could go through and stick my needle in there. But I went the wrong way. Go that way. <laughs> but I left that gap open so I could get the needle in there. And then look at here. I got two and two. So I'll go all the way around. When I get to the bind off edge, it's the same thing. It's But it's a perfect, easy to slide under V there. Go all the way around. Once you've gone all the way around, then you just simply bind off all those stitches. That's where you knit into the first two stitches and then lift up and over. Very easy. And that just gives you that nice little edge. So if you need help with binding off, we'll put a link up above for our stitch support video to give you more information on the binding off method. After you're done binding off, don't forget, weave in your ends and block. Again, this is the same fabric from the soaker, so I highly recommend that you um, hand wash these, wet, soak them, and lie flat to dry. You don't want them felting. Don't throw these in the washing machine. And then you are good to go. So once you're finished, go ahead and wrap them up. They make great baby gifts. They knit up so super fast. You could knit these up in no time at all. And they're great for last minute baby shower gifts. We've got spring coming, so be prepared for that. Thank you so much for joining me for the Love Bug Baby Set Knit Along. 
I hope you enjoyed knitting the jumper and the soaker and the changing pad along with me. I had a lot of fun designing this particular pattern. I don't have any little babies at home anymore. So to be able to knit something for somebody else and know that they're gonna enjoy it, really just, I love babies. I'm, I'm a baby fool and I've got baby fever, but no more babies. <laughs> I've got seven as it is, we're good. But thank you so much. Don't forget to check out the kits at onebighappy.com. The kits include the pattern and the yarn. And go ahead and check us out on Facebook. We'd love to see pictures of your projects at um, our One Big Happy Yarn Company Makers group on Facebook. And don't forget to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe. Happy knitting. <laughs>